Each blade of grass, every field, stream, and the life they sustain are part of the delicate system that is our planet. The world over, our interdependence at a more basic level goes back millions of years. The touch point for every society and every form of life is our natural world. And neglecting its care would threaten our health today and longer term perhaps our very survival. That's why in 1951, a coalition of scientists, conservationists, and people just like the rest of us came together to form the Nature Conservancy. The Conservancy adopted a global, results-oriented approach to preserve areas crucial to the Earth's ecosystems. And right here in America's heartland, the Kansas chapter of the Nature Conservancy is working to restore and preserve the natural wonders in our heritage and our futures as good stewards of this magical place called Kansas. It was not long ago that Kansas was teeming with flora and fauna. Magnificent herds of bison grazed in head-high tall grass prairie while migratory shorebirds and waterfowl fed in our lowland marshes on their seasonal journeys. There was an ebb and flow in the animal world, a natural order ensuring the survival of each. The vastness of Kansas, with its variety of plant life and waters, was fertile ground for the marvels of nature to unfold. The fertile earth of Kansas enticed settlers to build communities farms and ranches during the westward expansion. Over time, and through mechanized farming, Kansas became the breadbasket of our nation and the world. Huge tracts of tilled land brought forth a bounty of grains, and the prairie grasses that once sustained herds of bison began to support herds of cattle destined for America's dinner tables. Today, Kansas continues to provide for the world, as well as its own. But we have begun to ask, at what cost? As we've learned more about the interdependence of all life on Earth, we've developed an expanded awareness of the critical need to protect and nurture its vital systems. To their credit, the farmers and ranchers of Kansas have been mindful of caring for the land while producing the foodstuffs we all need. But we now know that ecosystems need space, landscape-scale tracks for plant life, which, in turn, supports animal life in healthy numbers. The Kansas chapter works with communities, businesses, and citizens to protect the areas needed to support the diverse species of flora, native, and migratory wildlife seeking to balance the needs of landowners with the needs of nature. The Conservancy's goal is to work cooperatively for the benefit of both. Once, tall grass prairie covered 145 million acres from Canada to Texas. Only a small fraction of it exists today, most of that in Kansas. In cooperation with Kansas ranchers, the chapter is working to protect this unique natural wonder. Together we enact conservation easements and promote land management that is ecologically and economically sustainable. Conservation easements are voluntary contracts with landowners that preserve land from development that would threaten natural habitats. It balances the needs of ranching as well as education, tourism, and community development with those of nature. Most people don't think of wetlands when they think of Kansas. But Cheyenne Bottoms in central Kansas is one of the preeminent shorebird spring migration staging areas in the contiguous United States. In fact, the Convention on Wetlands, signed by more than 100 nations, has recognized Cheyenne Bottoms as a wetland of international importance. The Bottoms is a 41,000-acre wetland complex comprised of lowland marshes, 
ringed on three sides by limestone, sandstone, and shale bluffs. Nearly half of all U.S. shorebirds migrating east of the Rockies, along with a quarter million waterfowl and the federally endangered whooping crane, stop to feed and rest in the marshy basin of pools and mudflats. The uplands provide critical nesting and wintering cover for a variety of grassland birds. Far western Kansas is a story of major significance in a number of ways. The short and mixed grass prairie that once stretched as far as the eye could see is now largely irrigated and dryland farming. Many wildlife species depend on short grass prairie for sustenance, yet only fragments remain. Once part of a vast inland sea, this part of Kansas is a treasure trove for archaeologists, geologists, and paleontologists, rich in fossil history. The area is also significant in human history. It was part of the hunting grounds of the Arapaho and Cheyenne tribes. The headwaters of the Smoky Hill River was a stopping point for Wild West names like Fremont, Cody, Carson, Hickok, and Custer. In the late 1800s, freed slaves and their descendants established communities in the area. And the first physical evidence that humans inhabited North America at the end of the last ice age was unearthed here in 1895. The Kansas chapter recognized these remarkable features and purchased what is now the Smoky Valley Ranch. The chapter's goal is to return the plant and wildlife communities to their pre-settlement character and preserve our historical legacy. One of the highlights of the work at the Smoky Valley Ranch is the reintroduction of the black-footed ferret, one of the rarest mammals in North America, unseen in Kansas for 50 years and once thought to be extinct. The preserve is a premier location in efforts to move this intriguing animal away from its endangered species designation. The Tallgrass Prairie, the Cheyenne Bottoms, and the Black-Footed Ferret are just three of the natural wonders the Nature Conservancy Kansas chapter is working to restore for Kansans, for the world community, and our shared future. In the process, we've learned that ecosystems need large tracts to prosper, along with vast areas for the natural processes that support the preserves. We know that nature can't be fenced in and people can't be fenced out. So our conservation efforts are designed in cooperation with local communities and landowners so that each is well served. More importantly, the purpose of our work is not just to create beautiful vistas for our grandchildren. Today, we recognize that biodiversity is intrinsically linked to human well-being, so it must be a priority. Conservancy efforts have had great success, but there is much more to do. And you, along with others who love the beauty and diversity of Kansas, can join in the effort. Together, we can fulfill our obligation to be good stewards and to pass on something just as valuable to future generations. To learn more about the Nature Conservancy and how you can support its work in Kansas, please visit nature.org slash Kansas. <laughs>